Next Sunday, we will be honoring our veterans, and that'll be followed by a pancake and sausage brunch and a free will offering for that, to which you are all invited. Uh, let's see, there's a whole bunch of other announcements here. Sisters at Heart selling calendars. We're looking for a help, particularly young people, to help with the, with the uh, Sunday services, so please sign up on the back there. Still taking bids on the pews, and so uh, if you'd be interested in having one of those. And then there's a whole bunch of different dinners and things at various other places. Sunday the 15th, the Nordland women will have their thank offering service with a special offering taken to proclaim the good news in our community, in our synodical women's and church-wide organizations also. And then November 15th will be the annual meeting part one for Nordland Lutheran Church, and that will be immediately following the service. Are there any other announcements that need to be made? Hearing none, then I would ask you to take the blue hymnals and turn to number 690 or check the screens out. Shall we gather at the river? Would you rise as we join in singing? Please turn, turn to the screen or to your bulletins as we remember. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy and the God of all consolation. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We give thanks 
For those who were baptized this past church year, Brody Olson, Chase Shoemaker, Nolan Lucanbill, Aubrey Lichen, and Henry Thielen, we were buried with Christ by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead, For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, those who died in the Lord still live with you in joy and blessedness. We remember and give thanks for Violet Hagen, Ron Hansen, Joe Lonsbury, Eileen Porter Brady, Dorothy Hislop, Harlan Nepson, Dina Van Dorsten Thompson, and all of those who died this past year. We commend them into your hands, O merciful Savior, sheep of your own fold, lambs of your own flocks, and sinners of your own redeeming. Please be seated. First reading is from Isaiah 25, verse 6 through 9, is found on page 1095 of your Pew Bible. On this mountain, the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best meats, and the finest of wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove the disgrace of his people from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day, they will say, Surely this is our God. We trusted in him and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. Second reading is from Revelations 21, verse 1 through 6, and is on page 1937 of your pew Bible. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To him who is thirsty, I will give to drink without cost from the spring of the water of life. The word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. The gospel according to John, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. We're on page 1669, and we're beginning with verse 32 at the bottom of the left-hand column. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. 
When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who, were with, who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and troubled. Where have you laid them? He asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind men have kept this man from dying? Jesus once more was deeply moved. He came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, Martha said, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been dead for four days. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Several years ago, a story came out on the newswire services about a man who lived in Greenville, South Carolina, who had died. After his burial, a letter from the County Department of Social Services arrived at his home. In part, the letter said, your food stamps will be stopped effective March 1992 because we received notice that you passed away. You may reapply if there's a change in your circumstances. Well, in the gospel lesson we just heard, a man who is named Lazarus, who resided in the city of Bethany, dies. His friend Jesus receives notice that he has passed away. Jesus arrives in Bethany and drastically changes Lazarus' circumstances. After saying to Lazarus' sister, Martha, your brother will rise again, I am the resurrection and the life, Jesus brings Lazarus back from the dead. And those words become among the most important things that Jesus ever said, and the most reassuring words that we will ever hear. I am the resurrection and the life. On the first Easter Sunday morning, Jesus conquered death on our behalf for all time. Think about that. Death is our greatest problem, our greatest enemy but it has been overcome once and for all. Now it is true that Will Rogers once said the difference between death and taxes is that death doesn't get worse every time Congress meets. But then I suppose that that is only because death cannot get any worse than it already is. Death is our greatest enemy. However, Jesus changed Lazarus' circumstances that day in Bethany, and he has changed our circumstances too. Jesus has conquered death for us for all time, and now death, rather than being the end of our lives, has become for us the beginning of life and the gateway to eternal life. Every Sunday, we confess in church, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. We believe that we are on a path to a new world, a new world of love and joy and peace. What's more, we also believe that that world of love and joy and peace has already begun because John says in his gospel, while he does not say whoever believes will have eternal life, 
but rather he says whoever believes has eternal life. Our eternal life has already begun from this point until forever we will live. And Jesus, through the comfort that he brings us, has already brought us love and joy and peace. Now, admittedly, that is not perfect love and joy and peace, not in this world, because we live in a world of sin. But the love and the joy and the peace that we will experience in, in heaven, we have already begun to experience now. Think about this. What did Martha say? She said, yes, Lord, I know my brother will rise on the last day. But it didn't take that long, not at all. Lazarus rose that very day. And why was that? Because Jesus was there, right there, present with them. And he is the resurrection and the life. The raising, <coughs> excuse me, the raising of Lazarus was a sign that real life, the life that came, excuse me, the life that Jesus came to bring isn't something that just happens at the end, but it is something that happens everywhere that Jesus is present. It is happening in the world right around us right now, right here. In addition to this, Jesus gives us the promise that whoever lives and believes will never die. Which leads me to suspect that even our death someday is not death at all. At our death, we will simply pass from this life to the next. And when we die, I seriously doubt that we will even notice that we have died. Our deaths will be more like blinking our eyes and finding we are someplace else. Our consciousness, our thoughts will continue, and it's interesting to speculate that it may, it may even take a few moments to realize that some things have changed. Like, all of a sudden, I don't feel so tired. In fact, I feel pretty good. No, I feel great. And that ache in my shoulder, I think it's gone. Yeah, gone. And that feeling like I think I forgot something, that's gone too. But why is my vision all fuzzy? Oh, I still have my glasses on and it appears that I don't need them anymore. Because all of these things will be fixed in heaven. That terrible serpent called death, which at one time would have devoured us whole, has lost its fangs, Paul says. O oh, death, where is your sting? Death doesn't even count anymore because Jesus is the resurrection and the life. We know that Jesus is the resurrection and the life and that eternal life for us has already begun. For as Jesus says, whoever lives and believes will never die. And we know that nothing can defeat Jesus' purpose for us. His purpose to live for him now and to live with him forever. Contrast that to what the world has to say about life. A few, years, a few years ago, a college newspaper offered a prize to the person who submits, submitted the best definition of life. Hundreds of entries poured in, and sadly, most of them were negative. Things like, life is a joke that isn't funny. Life is a jail sentence we get for the crime of being born. Or life is a disease for which there is only one cure, death. And on Larry King's show, CNN's famous Ted Turner 
gave this cynical definition of life. Life is a B-grade movie. You don't want to leave in the middle, but you don't want to see it again. And I remember hearing that and thinking, life is a B-grade movie? Ted Turner was a successful businessman, a billionaire, an America Cup sailing champion, owner of the Atlanta Braves. And he says life is a B-movie? Now, in fairness to Mr. Turner, it seems that his life has changed lately. In an interview with the Associate Press back in 2008, he said, I regret that I said anything about religion that was negative. Religion is one of the bright spots as far as I, I am concerned. Even there are a few areas, like everything else, where I, they may have gone a little over the top. But he continues and says, I'm sure that God, where, wherever he is, wants us to get along with one another and love each other. And the religious community is a huge and very good, has a huge and very good reputation for being able to mobilize resources. Why not work with them and be thankful for them? Now we may ask, is Ted Turner sincere in saying this? After all, he is getting closer to the end of his life than to the beginning. But then I read and it said that he formed a $200 million partnership with Lutherans of the ELCA and the Missouri Synod and also with the United Methodists to fight malaria and also apologized for his past criticism of religion as he renounced this new effort. Now, if that sounds even slightly familiar, yes, this is the very same malaria campaign that we have been contributing to over the past few years. This is the malaria campaign of the ELCA and other churches that Mr. Turner has dedicated $200 million to. But there is one more thing about Mr. Turner that is relevant to our subject for today. I began to be more curious and read, read some more, and I found out this. Young Ted Turner was going to become a missionary. But then his 12-year-old sister became extremely ill with lupus. And after several years of misery, she died. And Turner turned away from God. Now I can see why people sometimes question God when a loved one dies. And while we question the time and circumstances of their death, what it basically comes down to is this. God, we love them and we are going to miss them. But I wish that someone could have been there to say to Mr. Turner, I can't tell you why your sister died. And even if I could, would you miss her any less? I can't tell you why your sister died, but I can tell you this. God was not content to sit back and watch us suffer and die. But God joined us here in this world, and he suffered and he died right along with us so that ultimately he could put an end to suffering and death. And your sister is in his arms right now, because Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And that is no honorary degree. That is no honorary title. Jesus became the life, the resurrection and the, and the life the hard way. By suffering, by dying, and by rising. He died, he suffered and died and rose for our saints that we named here today. 
and he suffered and died and rose for us. Your food stamps will be stopped effective March 1992 because we received notice that you passed away. You may reapply if there is a change in your circumstances. Lazarus experienced this kind of change in his circumstances, a change from death to life. We have his story in order to let us know that Jesus is the great changer of circumstances. He is the resurrection and the life. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you were not content to sit back in heaven and watch us suffer and watch us die, but that in your wisdom and in your love you sent Jesus, your Son, to take our sin upon himself and by dying to forgive that sin and then by rising to bring us life. As we remember those who have gone before us, help us to take hope in that they are with you in heaven and will be there someday too. And help us, knowing all this, to live for you here. We pray this in your name. Amen. Our next hymn is from the Green Hymnal. It's number 352. I know that my Redeemer lives. We'll do verses 1 through 4. Would you please rise and turn in the front of the green hymnal to page 84 or to the screens as we join together in confessing our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven 
By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord, we pray for your church throughout the world that we may be confirmed in our faith, sustained in the hope that Jesus brings, and deepened in community, in a community of love for one another. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who have earthly power, that they may recognize that we, as your children, are anxious to work with them to help build up this earthly city, that we want to work for the good of all people. Help them to have that goal, the good of all, and to know that we wish to work with them in this. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, those who are weighed down by trial and distress, that the example of the saints and the hope and courage that they displayed may help those of us who are believers here in this world still to have hope as they had hope. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our church gathered to celebrate your supper and those who are celebrating that supper with you in heaven, and for all people throughout the world, that they may be nourished by your word of truth and by the bread of life. And may we let others know of your great love for us, the forgiveness of sins, and the hope of everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who have particular needs, those we name here and those we name in our hearts that you would bring healing, hope, comfort, and peace to them. We think of Marlis Chestness and Carla Wheeler, also the family of Donna Donner and Chris Johnson Schunemann. Bring to them all your hope and your peace. Lord, in your mercy. We think of those that we knew and loved who have left this life, but who left with confidence that they were going to meet you and be with you forever. May, they join, may we someday join them together and worship around your throne in all joy and happiness. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, you are adored by angels and praised by the saints. We ask that you would receive our prayers and grant them according to your gracious will and your great love for your people. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us share with one another the peace of the Lord. I was told that my prayer was unclear. Chris did not die. Uh, she has been transferred to 
Rochester to Mayo, where they're still awaiting liver transplant, I believe it is, or whatever. Okay, so I'd like to ask you to please receive the offering now. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated and come forward as you are directed. If you're coming for communion, hold your hands upright. If you're coming for a blessing, please hold them down. If you'd like to have grape juice instead of wine, indicate by holding up one finger. Jesus invites you to receive his body and blood, which he has given for us for our forgiveness. Your burdens 
him your faith and your fear bring him your life if you are weary or strong if you are captive or free all that you need is right here
Please rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. We pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn for today is from the Red Hymnal. It's number 546, For All the Saints. We'll do, do verses 1, 3, 4, and 5.